you can't find a job. Well, it's not just you. I've applied to about 150 jobs between October to now, and I'm still unemployed. People came and find a job with multiple degrees. This is not what I expected. I graduated college with two degrees in communications and acting. I speak three languages. This sucks. Even if they have experience already. I just think that it is very, very, very funny, comedic even, that I used to run restaurants and now I can't even get a job as a host. And across different industries. You may be wondering like what happened with the other two companies. Guys, tech recruiting sucks. I literally submitted a hundred, over a hundred application for multiple companies. I am a business consultant and I've worked 13 years with healthcare domain. Yet, allegedly, there are 8.5 million jobs available and only 6.5 million people looking for jobs in the United States. That's 1.3 jobs per unemployed person. In this video, let's figure out what is going on. It's not just the US thing, it's actually a global issue. I'd also like to share some tips on how you can increase your chances of landing a job, but also share some alternative ways that people are finding success because securing a nine to five job is not the only path. Applying for jobs, especially at the initial application, is a numbers game. That is, the more jobs you apply for, the higher the likelihood of you landing a job. However, that's not all you have to do. You need to get your resume through the screening, then ace all the rounds of interviews, and finally negotiate at the end to ensure setting yourself up for success. That is a lot, and on this channel, we talk a lot about using AI. So that is why I recommend checking out the ultimate AI toolkit for job seekers from HubSpot, which you can download for free. The first resource inside is a list of 20 AI tools that you can use for your job search, from job matchers to resume builders and interview prep tools. My favorite part is the second resource, which is a list of 60 ChatGPT prompts that you can use during your job search, preparation, research, interviews, and more. It's so important to use the tools at your disposal in order to stand out in this difficult job market. So I recommend you download this AI toolkit for job seekers at this link over here, also linked in the description. Thank you so much HubSpot for providing us free resources to leverage the power of AI and for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now back to the video. This the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey called JALTS that is conducted monthly by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And at first glance, it looks pretty good. Like I said, there are 8.5 million jobs available and only 6.5 million people who are unemployed. Plenty of jobs to go around. But if you take a closer look and look at this other chart, a chart of hires that were made, we saw that only 5.5 million people were hired, which is the lowest in 6.5 years since December of 2017. Also this chart that shows the number of people that quit. We see that a lot of people are not quitting anymore. The great resignation thing, that is long behind us because people know that if you quit your job, the chances of getting another one is pretty slim. And this is what gives us a hint that the optimistic numbers may not be what they seem. What counts as an available job is three things. Number one, a specific position exists and there is work available. Number two, the job can start within 30 days. And number three, it is actively recruiting outside workers. So these are pretty vague criteria, and there are a number of things that can make it seem like there's more available jobs. According to these leaked documents published on Engadget, in 2022, Amazon had an annual employee turnover rate of 150%. That is crazy. Amazon has 6 million employees worldwide, and just to maintain that number, they're hiring 2.4 million employees per year because the average tenure of an Amazon employee is only between 9 to 12 months. So since they know that they're going to have these people turning over, they don't even bother taking down the job postings and they just have it open all of the time. Uh, at some point, if they ever need anyone, they can just, you know, pull from the people who are applying. If you've been applying to jobs, or I guess just like looking at the job boards for fun for some reason, you also notice is that there are a lot of identical postings that just have different locations listed. But that's because a lot of jobs these days are hybrid where you can just choose to be completely remote. So in order to attract the biggest pool of talent, they would take the same job posting and just have it posted based upon different regions that are there because it doesn't really matter where these people are located and this just gives them better reach. So even though you're seeing many different job postings, it really is just for one position to be hired. But at least those were for real. Companies are actually trying to fill those positions Positions because there are also what are called ghost jobs. These are jobs that were never meant to be filled in the first place. Why are all of these places hiring, but like won't fucking hire someone? Like this is actually perfectly legal and companies have been doing it for a very long time. 
However, there has been a huge uptick in these ghost jobs, which is why there's so many people on TikTok talking about how it's crazy because they would apply to these jobs and never hear back from them, or they would even get to like the first, second, or even final round and then just get completely ghosted by that company. That's because the jobs weren't real in the first place, unfortunately. So why are companies doing this? Well, there's actually a few reasons. The first reason has to do with the general state of companies in the economy right now. Companies and investors alike are becoming more cautious. There's a lot of hiring freezes all across the country as people prepare for a potential recession. However, just because things aren't looking good now doesn't mean that they won't become better in the future, right? So to prepare for a hopefully better future, they're building up this database of applicants who would be interested and potentially a good fit for the role. So when they do want to hire in the future, they can just mass email everybody or reach out to everybody on LinkedIn asking them if they want to um, join a company then. The data that's coming in from the applicants is also really useful for the company. They're able to see like what people's competitive rates are, what are the types of people that are applying to certain jobs, what other jobs they may be applying for. So all of this is really helpful in just getting a better understanding of the general markets, even if they never intended to actually hire these people. And third, they're just pretending that they're hiring people in order to keep their current employees um, happy and feeling better. For example, say you're working your job right now at your current company, and since because there's a lot of layoffs that are happening, potentially your team is now understaffed. So there's a lot of work and you're the one that has to go and fill the position of not just like one person, but like two or even three people on the team. You're working ridiculous hours and doing things that are not even part of your job description. So you probably go to your boss and to HR and be like, hey, like this is not working out. You guys really need to hire people because I'm busting my ass here and I'm like dying right now. Um, so as the HR person and as your boss, you can't just straight up be like, no, we're not hiring. Just suck it up, right? Because if you heard that, you'll probably just be like, fuck this and either just tap out completely or just like, you know, quit or something like that. So in order to make you feel heard, HR will put these job postings um, and just be like, look, we're actively trying to recruit people right now. But when nobody gets hired, because they're not actually wanting to hire in the first place, at least they can be like, look, we're still trying over here. And so then you feel better because you're like, oh, like at some point there's going to be help on the way. So they're just going to like squeeze as much out of you as possible until you're just like done. For example, based upon this report from a Business Insider, an Amazon team posted nearly 25,000 job openings last year when only 7,800 had been approved. Of course, Amazon is not the only company that's doing this. There are a lot of other companies that are doing this as well, which is why going back to the chart over here, there is a pretty low number of people actually being hired despite having a lot of job postings available. On the other hand, in order to count as an unemployed person, you have to fit three criteria. Number one is that you don't currently have a job. Number two, you've been actively looking for a job in the prior four weeks. And number three, you are currently available to work. This criteria to count on as unemployed person is pretty strict. According to a recent economic news release titled Employment Situation Summary, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that there are 5.4 million people who want a job but do not qualify to be counted as unemployed. For example, this girl. Four jobs! Four jobs! While I'm in college in rural Tennessee and I can barely pay my own rent! She's working four jobs in order to make ends meet because she has to eat while she's looking for other jobs. She doesn't count as being unemployed because she technically has these jobs. This guy too. I've been looking for a job since like the end of last year. And of course I didn't have like much luck. So of course, you know, sometimes I probably have to do a little bit of Uber, a little bit of DoorDash just to get some money in my pocket. He's doing contract jobs, these odd jobs like DoorDashing, Uber Eats, um, being an Uber driver or a Lyft driver. But technically, because he's doing these, he's not actually considered unemployed. If you're taking a break from job hunting or you just kind of like gave up, um, you also don't technically count as unemployed because you had not been actively looking to get a job in the prior four weeks. A good job is very different from a job. Let's say you've spent four long years and are now in tens and thousands of dollars in debt because of your student loads in order to finally get your undergraduate degree in marketing. Congratulations, you have now graduated. And your natural assumption is that you're going to now go and look for a job related to marketing, your degree. But looking through the job boards, you see very few positions that are hiring for marketing that you fit the qualifications for. Plus, even those are paying really bad. So you might think to yourself, hmm, I should get a master's degree so that I qualify for more positions and I would earn better salaries. This is the mentality of most people. 
more degrees equal better job opportunities. So no wonder it's a huge shock that they get that degree and is even more in debt and still can't get a job. Still not even an entry level job. Everybody is thinking this way and there's actually a Chinese term for this. It's called juan. It's when uh, everybody's trying to get more master's degrees, like more degrees, more certificates, more awards, and trying harder and harder in order to compete for the top jobs, the good jobs. Yet at the same time, the number of these good jobs is actually decreasing. According to a recent report by Vanguard, by looking at the enrollment and contribution rates to 401k retire plans, they were able to deduce a national hiring rate broken down by income level. And what these numbers show is that there's actually a two-tier job market. It's divided into a blue-collar boom and a white-collar recession. Among Vanguard's lowest earners, which is on the blue-collar side, those who make less than $55,000, the hiring rate has actually held up well. At 1.5%, it's still at the pre-pandemic rates. However, among those that make over $96,000, the good jobs, hiring has slowed down to 0.5%, which is less than half of the peak it reached in mid-2022. Excluding the dips in the months of the pandemic, because that was a very special time, it's the worst it's been since 2014. So this makes a lot of sense. If you're someone who graduated with a four-year degree, potentially even have a master's degree, and then most likely also have a shit ton of student loans, you're not aiming for the lower bracket jobs. You're trying to get jobs in the higher brackets. And you kind of need to, in just to pay back those student loans. Unfortunately, this trend is continuing and things are looking worse. Say you're looking for a job and you've been looking for months now and you still don't have anything. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to start examining the budget that you do have. You're going to think about where you can start cutting costs, how it is that you can spend less. Especially with interest rates this high, you're going to be pretty hesitant on borrowing more money. Only thing on your mind, save more, spend less. Well, this is exactly what is happening. According to the Confidence Board, which is a global nonprofit think tank and business membership organization, had a recent press release titled Consumers More Pessimistic About Future Business Conditions, Jobs, and Income. They report that consumer confidence is the lowest in the past 21 months, with people particularly concerned about elevated price levels, especially for food and gas, dominated consumers' concerns. Starbucks, your quintessential source for over priced coffee, just reported its weaker than expected quarterly earnings and revenue. The company's overall revenue dropped by 2%, and traffic to its cafes declined by 6%. People are starting to cut down on little treats in life, like $6 coffee, because they just can't afford it anymore. But the thing is, since people are spending less now, the companies are doing worse. Therefore, they're not going to be hiring more people. In fact, many of them are laying off people. So then people are get laid off, so they have less money to spend. And then, you know, it's just like a vicious cycle. And kind of adding fuel to the fire, companies are also realizing that they don't actually have to hire that many people in order to sustain their business. Because of the development of new technologies like AI, this has helped their current employees be more productive. So allowing these companies to save that cost of hiring new employees. On this channel, I talk a lot about careers and also uh, looming AI enabled layoffs. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it now, but you can check out the video over here if you're interested in learning more. Anyways, a lot of companies are starting to realize that they can use AI in order to compensate for less people. But something else I wanna point out is that this is not just a US specific thing. Global companies with many stores and franchises across the world is a really great way Way to compare what's up in different regions of the world. There's this metric called same store sales, which is a way to compare performance across stores regardless of location. Going back to Starbucks, in the US, same store sales is down by 3% last quarter. This is not great, but internationally, it's even worse. They saw a 6% decline as both average ticket and transactions stopped. In China, for example, which is Starbucks' second biggest market, same store sales plunged by 11%, fueled by an 8% decline in average ticket. I've been in China for a few months now, and China has a very consumer driven culture. And just visibly, I can see how much consumption has decreased, especially for larger cities like Beijing, which I've mostly spent my time in. Um, luxury stores and like things like that used to be packed full of people and now they're pretty much empty anyways the point i'm trying to make is that this unemployment problem is not a u.s specific thing it's actually a global issue in fact the u.s was kind of the exception to that rule but it seems like the u.s is regressing towards the mean of this not great global economy which means that this not great trend is likely going to continue as globally we're all doing not great okay so given all of this i hope you can see that 
that it's not that people are being lazy like some boomers are implying because they're like oh unemployment rates are so low you're just being lazy and not looking for jobs it actually is an issue it's just an issue that is not um, as clearly shown in the numbers the question you're probably thinking now is like that's great Hina so what am I supposed to do knowing all of this in my opinion, there's two broad options here, excluding the option where you just give up completely, which I think you should definitely not do. Option one is that you're still trying to go for that nine to five job, except now you're more informed. And the first thing is to be kind to yourself, realize that this is an issue for everybody right now. It's not just a you problem. You also need to set aside unrealistic expectations where you can just apply for jobs and then you'll be able to land something. It is going to be a grind. You know that companies are having multiple postings even though they're only hiring for a single role. You'll also now know that there are a lot of ghost jobs out there in which they were never intended to be filled. This means that you need to be more cognizant about which jobs you're applying for. Like don't spend a significant amount of time and effort in order to apply for jobs in which you have a slim chance of getting which just like don't exist at all. So if you see a posting that has so many duplicates, um, just know that this is a job that you most likely shouldn't be spending a significant amount of time and effort on because there are a lot of people that are going to be applying for that single position. And also check on the company that you're applying to. If you see recent news that things are not going well for them, there is a higher likelihood that these are going to be ghost jobs. If you see a posting that's been there for a while, probably a ghost job. If you see a posting that's there taking off and the same thing is listed again, probably a ghost job. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, but networking is even more important now. If you're going through your network, not only can you be sure that it's not a ghost job, getting that referral will help a lot in standing out against a very, very big sea of applicants. There's also a lot of content out there on how to be better at networking and things. I'm not going to go through that, but you know, focus on the networking part. And finally, upskilling. This is something that is actually completely within your control. Learn the skill sets that are in demand right now. Things that other people applying for that position likely don't have. The most obvious and applicable skill set is going to be on the technical side. Learning how AI works, learning how to build AI products, because these are things that companies are focusing on. Option two, open yourself up to more alternative careers and lifestyles. To this day, a traditional definition of success is to go to a good university and then get a high paying security secure 9 to 5 job, work hard, save money, and then eventually buy a house. Boomer stuff, white picket fence, American dream. I do want to make a caveat that I'm not shitting on this kind of lifestyle. There's a reason why it's the traditional definition of success. And me personally, one of my dreams is actually to buy a home. But I also realized that given how high interest rates are, this is probably not a great idea. Some of you may also know that I've been kind of semi-nomadic for the past two years. Somewhat not a choice, but to be honest, I'm glad that I somehow fell into this lifestyle because working for myself, having my own business, business, working on content, as well as running um, career programs, I'm able to work completely remotely, which is really great because I could travel and see new things and kind of like change my environment. But also it means that I can go to places in the world in which the cost of living is much, much cheaper. If I stayed in San Francisco where I was previously, it's just the money that I'm making doesn't last that long. But because I'm fully remote, if I go somewhere like Thailand or China that I'm here, it lasts two times, three times, even five times more than if I was staying in the States. It's actually kind of ironic because for a lot of people, the dream after having that traditionally successful career is to have the freedom to travel anywhere they want. I guess many of us now kind of skip the stuff in the middle and like buying a house and things like that and just kind of directly go to the end goal. I just want to point out that I'm perfectly aware that this is a privilege for me to live this kind of lifestyle. And there are definitely pros and cons to this. However, technology has enabled more of us to be able to achieve something like this. The time that you're spending trying to get that traditional nine to five career, I think if you spend a portion of that time also just kind of even like exploring um, some alternatives, like focusing on contract jobs, you may find that uh, there is that path out there for you, which is just different than what you've been taught. Finally, for those of you thinking about college, currently have a college degree or even thinking about a master's degree, from this discussion, I hope I can challenge your thoughts in terms of getting that degree equals better job opportunities and more degrees equals better job opportunities. There are alternate ways of getting an education, ones that are actually a lot cheaper and a lot more practical. For example, the company Course Careers is an alternative to traditional universities. They teach you the essential skill sets, except it's a lot cheaper and they focus on things that are actually useful in the real world which for a lot of universities, um, they don't actually teach you those things. All right, I hope this video has helped clarify some of the questions you may have, some of the frustrations that you may have, and help you have more clarity in terms of the next steps that you want to be taking to progress in your career. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.